Hello everyone, this is Jordan from AutoAid. Today we're going to be looking at a 2016 Ram 1500 that will not power up. Uh, after getting some customer info, uh, we found that the vehicle uh, will not power up, will not crank. Uh, key on, everything remains off, no visible vehicle activity. So when we turn the key on in this thing, uh, we have no dash cluster, we have no radio. Um, things like interior lights will work, uh, but, but nothing else. So I think what we're going to do next is uh, hook up the scan tool. Now today we're going to be using the YTech 2, which is Chrysler's factory scan tool. And this is the main home screen um, you come to after you start communicating with the vehicle. Um, and uh, what we have here basically is uh, what they call the topology, which is basically a roadmap for all the modules. So I'm just going to explain uh, what we're looking at here. Each square represents um, a different module, and every line here kind of represents the, uh, the bus that goes to each, mo each module. Um, this one here is likely going to be your CAN C. Uh, this blue circuit here, um, it's separate from this one. That's going to be your, likely your CAN B for all the body modules. Now, uh, each uh, square here, if it's gray, that indicates the vehicle can come with that module, but uh, that is not equipped on this particular vehicle. Um, if the module is blue, that means it is online and communicating. If we have a yellow module, that means that it is online and has code set. And uh, if we have a red module, that means it is built into the vehicle, but it is not communicating what it should be. So looking at the vehicle topology here, we can see that many systems remain offline when the key is cycled on. Now with the BCM and the IPC, uh, the cluster, stuff like that, um, when we turn the key on, they do come online. However, it is not because we turn the key on. Those modules um, will come online when uh, the door opens and it sees the uh, door ajar switch open, or if you push the uh, unlock button on the key fob, these modules uh, will power up that way. So next we're just going to look at the power up procedure for how this vehicle should power up. Basically what I did was I just went to the starting circuit that kind of gives you a good view um, generally of how these vehicles are supposed to power up and start. Uh, so we can see here we have the keyless ignition node module that is the uh, module where you insert the, the key, those little plastic keys you get from, uh, from Chrysler. And looking at the wiring, we can see, um, might be kind of hard to read here, but um, ignition switch position signal. And you can see that wire goes down to this other module here, which is the radio frequency hub module. From there, uh, it looks like we have an ignition run start control output to the BCM. And from there, we're not really sure from this diagram, so we're going to have to look that up to be exactly sure how this works. So after doing a little bit of digging, I was able to uh, find a description of how this powers up, and I have condensed it on the next slide. So first we have the ignition node module. It sends key position data uh, to the radio frequency hub over a private bus, which is this circuit right here, the ignition switch position signal circuit from the node down to the radio frequency hub. And from there, the radio frequency hub sends key position info to the BCM over CAN. And from there, the BCM sends a wake-up signal to the PCM over CAN. That's a good thing we went back and checked this because by looking at the diagram, um, I assumed that it got a voltage input on this ignition run start control circuit, but it doesn't. It uh, sends the key position over CAN bus. So now what we're going to do is just check and make sure that the BCM is in fact uh, getting the, um, the key on command. Um, so as we are cycling the key on and off, uh, the ignition status does not change when the key is cycled. So now that we know how the vehicle powers up and that the BCM is not receiving the ignition message, we need to figure out why it's missing. So let's review what modules are communicating and which ones are not. To do that, we're going to go back to the topology screen. So now that we're looking at the topology screen, uh, we first start off with the, um, the ignition node. 
However, we don't see it on this screen. Now that's because there are no uh, CAN bus communication wires going to that module. It communicates directly with the next module in the chain, which is the radio frequency hub. And we're able to get information from that wind module through the RFH. Now, looking at our screen here, we can see that the RFH module is offline. With the radio frequency hub not communicating, uh, the key position data can't be sent to the VCM. Uh, so the VCM doesn't know what we're trying to do. It doesn't know that we're trying to power up and start the vehicle. So now we need to figure out why the RFH is not communicating. Uh, in order to do that, first we're going to have to locate the module. As you can see in the diagram here, um, it's indicating that the radio frequency module is behind the uh, rear passenger seat on the rear wall. And unfortunately with this, we're gonna, you're gonna have to remove the actual back seat uh, as it does not fold down in this truck. Um, so once the seat is removed and you have access to the module itself, uh, there's three main things we're gonna have to check. Uh, and this goes with any, any kind of module communication issue. Um, the three main things we have to check are powers, grounds, and the communication bus. Make sure we're not missing any of those three. So first we're going to start by looking at uh, the ground circuit. I'm going to get my trusty voltmeter out here and uh, measure voltage on the ground circuit. We have no voltage on that circuit, um, which tells us that the, uh, the circuit there is okay. So our ground circuit appears to be okay. Now we're going to check the, um, the power input to the radio frequency hub. And on that circuit, we only have half a volt. That is a problem. The module needs full 12 volts in order to power up and uh, communicate properly. So what we're going to do now is just to confirm that uh, this will power up uh, with proper power. We're just going to take a fuse jumper wire and uh, hook it up to the, to the battery positive and just jumper it to the um, to the battery input on this radio frequency hub and uh, try and start the truck. Lo and behold, with proper battery voltage fed to that module, the truck starts and runs no problem. Um, everything starts communicating again and uh, it appears to be the issue um, with this truck was that uh, there was no power going to that radio frequency hub. Now after doing a little bit of digging around and uh, wire tracing, um, I was able to locate an actual issue in the driver's door sill. Um, you lift up the uh, plastic sill plate and there is a big chunk of wiring harness and it's actually in that main uh, red wire there. You could not see an issue. I actually had to physically pull on that wire for it to break and it was corroded inside. Um, so if you're dealing with something like this, just be sure to um, thoroughly check the wiring as it doesn't always, uh, it doesn't always show corrosion on the outside of the, um, on the outside of the coating. So in the end, after repairing the corroded power wire, the vehicle started and ran normally.